Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Casey Peebler, board certified internal medicine physician and functional medicine specialist. Let's talk about some key takeaways regarding vitamin D. Number one, vitamin D3 has many important physiological functions. Many of these we're gonna talk about later in future videos. Number two, vitamin D has the ability to modulate our immune system, meaning it can lower inflammation levels and it can help prevent colds and flus, including COVID-19. And new data is coming out regularly regarding vitamin D and COVID-19. Honestly, vitamin D is actually quite easy to get when you have adequate UV exposure. However, due to lack of sun in the winter, supplementing with vitamin D3 is a very smart idea. Your local doctor needs to be checking your 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels regularly. That way, they can make sure you're getting an adequate dose. General recommendations would be about five to 10,000 international units per day. And that is a goal to keep your levels between 16 and 80 nanograms per deciliter. So when sun does come back in your area, there's a really cool app called D-Minder. I use it myself. I recommend it to all my patients. You can download it on the app store. And it's an easy way to track your vitamin D levels uh, between doctor's visits. All right, let's dive into a little research. What do we say here? All right, so let's start with this study from the Archives of Internal Medicine, February 2009. Serum vitamin D levels are inversely associated with recent upper respiratory tract infection. What we can take away from this paper is basically that if you have low vitamin D levels, you're more likely to have an upper respiratory infection. Let's check out the next one. Systemic review from the American Journal of Rhinology and Allergy published in 2016. Their findings were, there were significantly lower vitamin D3 levels in those with chronic sinusitis compared to those without. Low vitamin D levels are often associated with an increased degree of inflammation. So as you can see, I'm trying to paint a picture for you how this relates to vitamin or to COVID. You know, older studies have shown that it's in, you know increased risk of infections, increased, increased levels of inflammation and chronic sinus issues. The next paper we're gonna talk about is a review from the Journal of Infection in Developing Countries. The study was published in 2015. The evaluated studies show the important role vitamin D has at modulating the immune system, which reduces the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections in both children and adults. So you can see vitamin D is very important for the immune system. The next study is gonna be coming from the review of the journal Nutrient, published in March, 2020. Through several mechanisms, vitamin D3 can reduce risk of infections. We've already talked about this several times, right? In other papers. However, vitamin D deficiency has been found to contribute to acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, which is a terrible complication of any really pneumonia or bronchitis has a high mortality. So vitamin D deficiency has been found to contribute to an acute respiratory distress syndrome. Big news guys, big news. Next study, study from clinical medicine published in 2020. Now this is gonna get a little deep into the immune system. I'll try to explain this. T reg cells or T regulatory lymphocytes have been reported to be low in many COVID-19 patients and it can be increased by vitamin D supplementation. Now, according to this paper, a principal defense against uncontrolled inflammation would be these T regulatory cells, right? So vitamin D deficiency has been associated with an increase in inflammatory cytokines, AKA chemical messengers that are related to inflammation and a significantly increased risk of pneumonia and viral upper respiratory tract infections. It further says vitamin D deficiency is associated with an increase in clotting episodes, which are frequently observed in COVID-19 patients. Vitamin D deficiency has been found to be more common in patients with obesity and diabetes and these conditions carry a higher mortality or cause it, or chance of dying from COVID-19. According to this paper, which I think is a very strong statement, it is our opinion that supplementation would offer a relatively easy option to decrease the impact of the pandemic. Let that set in for a minute. Next study, Journal of Medical Virology, June 2020. Serum vitamin D levels could be implicated in COVID-19 prognosis, AKA how well you could potentially do if you have an infection. And it further says diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency could be helpful in assessing patients. This is why I always check vitamin D levels on patients I admit to the hospital, because I've seen this in my current practice is that patients who are admitted to the hospital, the more sick they are, the lower their vitamin D level is. And it is important for testing for prognosis, but also how severe it is. And it also allows me to know how much I need to supplement them with when they're in the hospital. The next study we're gonna talk about is a systemic review and meta-analysis from critical reviews and food science and nutrition. What this paper found was it identified that if, if you were vitamin D deficient, you have a 64% chance of having an increased risk of having severe COVID-19 versus a mild case. Moreover, if you have vitamin D deficiency, you have an increased risk for hospitalization by 81% and an increased risk for death by 82%. Just let that sink in. We observed a positive association between vitamin D deficiency and the severity of disease. Again, confirming what we've already seen in several other studies, right? The literature is painting the picture for us. Next study comes from the Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, July 2020. Administration of high dose vitamin D significantly reduced the need for ICU treatment, intensive care treatment, the sickest of the sick, reduced the need for that, 
in patients who required hospitalization, who were already sick enough to be in the hospital due to proven COVID-19. Vitamin D seems to be able to reduce severity of disease. This is now the, what, the third paper we've now highlighted in a row. Um, vitamin D deficiency is bad. It's, it makes your chance of having a bad outcome worse um, and more likely. And if you are not deficient, you're more likely to not require intensive care treatment. Next paper and last paper, I'm sure you're all thankful for this, comes from Nature, very important scientific journal we have from their scientific reports 2020. What they found was serum levels of inflammatory markers were found to be higher in vitamin D deficient patients who have COVID. Vitamin D levels are markedly low in severe COVID-19 patients. The inflammatory response is high, AKA this cytokine storm, which happens to be found a lot in this COVID-19. The cytokine storm is more likely to happen if you're vitamin D deficient. The bottom line from this paper, this all translate into increased mortality, caught, you know, dying of COVID-19 in vitamin D deficient patients with COVID. Over the past year, I have admitted hundreds of patients to the hospital with COVID-19. Almost every single one of them have had a low vitamin D level. As a matter of fact, the sickest ones had the lowest levels. And as you can now tell from the literature that we just went over, that correlates with what we're seeing in the field and the lab. So what's the bottom line? What are the final clinical takeaways? Again, vitamin D has many important physiological functions. Many of them we'll talk about in later videos. Vitamin D has the ability to modulate our immune system. Vitamin D is preferably obtained by getting adequate sun exposure. There's a really neat chemical reaction that happens between cholesterol and UVB. We'll talk about it later in future videos. However, for most of us, this time of year, vitamin D supplementation is necessary. Again, your local doctor needs to be checking your 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels regularly. A general recommendation would be five to 10,000 international units per day to keep your levels between 60 to 80. But again, it's important to have your levels checked. And when that sun's shining again, check out that DMinder app. It's really cool. Hey guys, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please like and subscribe, comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And until next time.